Traveling this bending road is always an adventure, and I'm glad we can do it together. It's easier together because no matter where we go in life, two things are for certain. One, you will eventually come to a bend in your road, and two, God will always see you through. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and click the subscribe button so that you know when I upload my next video. In this way, we travel together and we encourage each other along the way. Welcome back to The Bending Road. Glad you could join me today. I want to talk today, a kind of a follow-up to last week's conversation. Last week, I mentioned that we had taken a trip to Florida and uh, it's just some of the lessons that God, not, they weren't new lessons, but things that God reminded me of while we were traveling. God always reminds me of, of spiritual truths while I'm traveling. And one other thing that, that struck me yesterday, actually, was um, the question of our worldview. What is our worldview? And worldview is the, the lens through which we process information that we, that we receive could be the news or it could be a message from a friend or some difficult news from a doctor or um, just the things we see happening in the world around us. And there's a lot of input, right? A lot of stuff coming at us that we are processing every day. Whether we know it or not, it's happening. And I would say, you know, 99% of the time, we're not even aware that information is coming in, we're processing it through our filters, and and it's implanting somewhere in our in our brains. <clears throat> so when things happen frequently, when we get certain messages over and over and over, it becomes part of our thought process. It it controls how we view the next thing. Um, for for instance. If someone is is abused as a child, um, let's say that there's a, a man in the and, and not this is not against men. It's just a, just an example. Let's say there's a man in a child's life and that man abuses that child, and this is an ongoing message that that child receives. That child will most likely grow up with the message, the worldview in their, in their minds that men are bad, men are abusive. When you then bring that into the church and we talk about God as a masculine figure, that could translate that worldview, that already preset idea is, is then laid on God. So if if I was abused as a child, then all men are abusive, and therefore God, if he's a man, must be abusive. I get that. That That is so real. It is so real. And there's so many things I could say about that. So I'm going to narrow this down. We can talk about more of that later. But the, the point is, is that the way we process information, you know, God is a male, therefore abusive. The way we process that works through the filters that we've developed for a long period of time. Those filters may or may not be truth, right? Just because one man is abusive doesn't mean all men are are abusive, doesn't mean all men are abusive all the time, doesn't mean that God is abusive. Just because we use, you know, male pronouns for God doesn't mean God is a male. I mean, none of those things are true. The only truth is that individual was abused by, by a man at one point. So that, that view, that worldview that is, that is, implanted in our brain needs to be adjusted for truth, right? So it's not that everything we think is, is a lie. It's not that everything we, we process is, is false, but we need to understand what are the filters through which we process things. Now, my filters are, are really a conservative Christian, Orthodox Christian worldview. 
comes from my parents, my grandparents, comes from years of, of learning, comes from um, all those years in Sunday school, right? When I got to a certain point in life, I began to, to question some of those things. And, and I, I didn't want to just say, Jesus died on the cross, therefore I'm saved. I, I wanted to understand that. Um, I didn't want to just say, you know, the, the Bible is the word of God. I wanted to understand that. So what did I do? I, I went back to school. I got a bachelor's degree in Bible and theology and, and I began to challenge my own worldviews and ask myself, why do I believe this is true? And can I believe it on my own? And can I support it on my own rather than just the, the worldview that has developed over the years. It's not an easy process, right? So then I wanted to know more, you know, and, and I, I went to, I did the course of study through the United Methodist Church, and then I, I went to seminary at Colgate, and, and Colgate challenged a lot of my worldviews. And, and I had to, I had to dig in deep. I had to understand where did those views come from? Why do I have those views? What is the lens through which I'm looking? And then is, does something need to change in me? And I, I will say that some things were, were adjusted. Other things were not. Other things were doubled down on what I, what I believe to be true. Um, so those, those worldviews can be um, adjusted. Those filters can be shifted and corrected if the filter is askew. The reason I was thinking about this and the reason I was connecting it to our trip is our windshield got dirty, right, as we traveled. And as we were looking through that windshield, things were distorted. We couldn't maybe see how close that car was in front of us. We couldn't see maybe a hazard in the road. We couldn't see clearly. Um, in the morning when we got up, if the, if the windows were foggy, you couldn't see to go you know, out your left or right to see what was coming. Um, here in New York State, you know, the, the big thing is you need to clean off your windows if your car has been sitting in the snow for a period of time. Why? Because you need to be able to see clearly the truth about what is around you. Even my backup camera, you know, on my car, it's funny because we go out to my car and, and the first thing my husband does is he walks across the back of the car, cleans off the, the backup camera and gets in the car. I never think about that. I never think about it until I put the car in reverse and go, I can't see anything out there. Um, I now have a rear rear windshield wiper on this car. Never had one of those before. And I thought, who needs that? I've driven a car for years that never had a rear windshield wiper. But oh my goodness, in this car, it is really helpful because without that trunk, that window gets dirty faster. And I can't see the truth about what is behind me, what hazards are around me. So I, I guess it's, it's an interesting little analogy about seeing clearly through the windows of the vehicle as we travel in order to stay safe. The same is true for our worldview. It's really important to read the scripture, study the scripture. Yes, check out some of those words in the original language. And we have tools in which to do that today and that make it so much easier than it's ever been. We need to do that. We need to not just read a section of scripture, but we need to read the scripture in the whole um, in order to get a clear picture of what it's telling us and what that context is. Who's talking? Who's talking to who? What are they talking about? How does this piece that I'm looking at fit in to that? But we also, I don't believe, can leave it to ourselves. We need to read other writers. And I challenge people to read not just people you agree with. That's easy. That's easy. I can read somebody I agree with and, and cheer them on. And yes, that's true. And mark things and think, oh, that's a good argument. I'm going to put that in my, my toolbox. But what about reading people you disagree with? I've had, I've had people come and recommend books and I've thought, mm, 
I don't know that author. So I look up the author and I think we're not going to agree. But if someone asks me to read that book, I will definitely do that. Now in the margins, I tend to write my, my, where do I disagree and things that I need to look that up. You know, maybe, maybe an author I disagree with says something, uh, quotes a scripture and, and says, this is what this scripture means. And I think, Oh, I, I don't know that that's what that scripture means. So I might take a break and I might go to the scriptures and I read a commentary, a couple of different comment. There's millions of commentaries. You can certainly find something. Um, and again, I would encourage you to read commentaries. Yes, maybe something from a, a Wesleyan tradition that you've grown up with, or maybe it's, it's a commentary by somebody that you wouldn't necessarily agree with. Maybe a little bent, a little difference um, in what you're familiar with. Um, and I, I say, I use the word disagree carefully because we don't know that we disagree with an individual until we read their work. If we say, no, I'm not going to read that author. I disagree with them. My question is, is have we read them? Have we read this work? What is it that you disagree with? Because maybe there's something in there you can agree with. Maybe there's something that you can get on the same page, even though you don't agree with every little detail or the direction, how, how a person got to a certain point. Anyway, all of this, all of this is, is part of building that worldview. And you know what? Only you can do that. Only you can clean off those windows, right? Clean up that filter through which you interpret the world around you. Or you can be content to sit with the ideas and the thoughts and the processes that you have developed over the years, not question what's happening around you or why. And, and just say, no, I believe this because I don't know, something in my past said that this was true. I encourage you to, to read, to learn, to build your own arguments. And there are tons of tools. If you want to know a tool to, to check out, let me know in the comments um, what kinds of tools are available. Um, I, don't, I don't think we can formulate our own opinions on everything all by ourselves. Why? Because everything is done through the filters that have developed over the years. So I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you. Find a book that might challenge you. And, and if it takes you six months to a year to read it, fine. But find something that, that you can read that challenges you a bit. If you want a suggestion, let me know. There's all kinds of all kinds of books out there. Video and, and videos. Um, YouTube is full of things that, that might challenge you and, and challenge that worldview and help you just figure out what is my worldview? Where does it come from? It's my hope that everybody develops, a, everyone who calls themselves Christian will develop within themselves a Christian worldview, seeing the world through the lens of Jesus Christ in the world. Jesus as Lord and Savior, King of the universe, creator, redeemer, and friend. Hope that's challenging you today and um, glad you could join me and I look forward to seeing you along the bending road. Thank you for watching and thank you for working together along this journey. Connect with me on social media or on my website at bendingroad.weebly.com. Let me know how I can pray for you as you navigate the bend in your road. I pray that when you see the bend in your road, you will not be afraid but will take the hand of God and keep walking. You are not alone.